Okay, so this is going to be the first of many videos where I talk about molecular orbital theory. And in this first video, I don't want to, you know, do anything like throw any crazy diagrams at you or anything like that just yet. In this first video, I just want to talk about um, some of the reasoning and mathematics behind molecular orbital theory and uh, just how it works. And to start off, I'm going to talk about the difference between molecular orbital theory and valence bond theory. So if you think back to uh, valence bond theory, valence bond theory deals with the hybridization of atomic orbitals. So valence bond theory is pretty useful because it can explain a, a lot of phenomenon that are observed among molecules. For instance, uh, the shape of methane, CH4, is a tetrahedron. Looks kind of like this. That's the observed shape of methane, and hybridization, or valence bond theory, accounts for this observed shape. Similarly, uh, a carbon-carbon double bond, such as this one, in this molecule here, this is uh, ethene. The carbon-carbon double bond in ethene is very rigid, and this is also accounted for in valence bond theory. So valence bond theory is useful, but it is limited. It, it has limitations. So recall, that uh, in valence bond theory, the electrons occupy these quantum mechanical orbitals called uh, the, these quantum mechanical orbitals that are calculated for atoms, for the individual atoms themselves. And these orbitals are calculated um, by solving the Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger equation is a second order differential equation, and the solution of a differential equation is itself a function, and those functions are the functions uh, that you see, the 3D models that you see for, um, for hybrid orbitals. So the limitation to valence bond theory is that the electrons are still confined to the individual atoms that make up the bonds. And in reality, they're not really confined. They, they're actually delocalized uh, over the entire molecule. So one part of the molecule may have more electron density than another, but basically those electrons just form a, a blob over the entire molecule, okay? And basically that's what molecular orbital theory is trying to um, describe. So in molecular orbital theory, the electrons occupy MOs, molecular orbitals. And for even the simplest, simplest molecules, it's impossible to solve the Schrodinger equation for the entire molecule. Um, that's just the, the thing about... Uh, differential equations of, you know, order two or higher, um, many of them are impossible to solve. That does not mean that they don't have a solution, but uh, th th there can exist, a, it, it's kind of weird with differential equations. It, you may or may not have taken differential equations, but uh, some differential equations, you, you may be able to show that there's a solution, but you may not be able to know what it is. It, it may be impossible. So that's basically what's going on with the Schrodinger equation for uh, in, entire molecules. So. The next best thing is for a molecule, we can set up what's called a trial function, which is just like an educated guess of uh, what the function might be, what the solution to the Schrodinger equation might be. And then you can test it, test the trial function to see how well it works. So the simplest trial functions are what are called linear combinations of atomic orbitals, or LCAOs. And they work reasonably well in molecular orbital theory. And basically what an LCAO is, is it's a weighted linear sum of the valence atomic orbitals of all of the atoms in a molecule. So a weighted, a weighted linear sum is basically just like an average. And it says the valence atomic orbitals, so valence means the outer, outermost shell of the atomic orbitals. The valence atomic orbitals of all of the atoms in a molecule. So this is the main difference between uh, valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory with LCAOs. Valence bond theory, you have hybrid orbitals, and those hybrid orbitals are weighted linear sums of the valence atomic orbitals, uh, just the atomic orbitals of, of, of individual atoms. And uh, LCAO molecular orbitals are weighted linear sums of valence atomic orbitals of every single atom in the molecule. So that's just, that's the main difference. And I think this is a good stopping point. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over the molecular orbitals for uh, the H2 molecule, and I'm also going to define uh, some of the um, different types of molecular orbitals, namely uh, bonding and anti-bonding. 
molecular orbitals. So in the next video, we're going to go over that. And I hope this first video was helpful. Good luck.